All right, let's uh, go ahead and play with this stress tensor again. So consider two equal point charges, Q, separated by a distance 2A, construct the plane equidistant from the two charges by integrating Maxwell's stress tensor over, the, over this plane. Determine the force of one charge on the other. B, do the same for the charges that are opposite in sign. All right, let's kind of doodle this out. We'll go ahead and put the charges on the z-axis because that's easy. And then we can make the plane in the x, y. And based on the um, charges that we have, the components will cancel or join together. So we just got to be careful. And we'll, set this, we'll do a similar setup to what we did last question. And so for our solution, part A is, with this being two point charges, this is electric forces only. Okay, since we're not dealing with moving charges, there's no currents, no magnetic forces to deal with. So being separated by a distance of 2A away, being the only constraint, let's assign these charges like we did to the z-axis, and then we'll show that the plane, like we also did, was in the xy plane. This makes it easier geometry. All right, so similarly, we want to find the component of the stress tensor for the integral that is in the z-direction only, so t dot dA. So again, since they're both positive charges here, we know that they're going to want to repel, and if we look at the forces, um, we see that they're going to be only in the z-direction, all right? So with that, uh, we have tzx, dax, and then tzy, day, and then plus tzz, daz. But let's note here that for this plane, symmetry says that the upper charge, dax equal day, since everything cancels, is zero. And then clearly here, the daz is equal to negative since it's pointing down. The field lines are pointing down. And we see that uh, that's equal to negative r or dr or d theta or d phi, excuse me. So with this, we have a pretty easy thing to deal with. Um, so, okay, we have a mu naught z, uh, ez, ez minus one half Dirac delta zz, which cancels to one, e squared times the dza or daz component. Again, negative since it's down with respect to the positive charge up top. And of course, you know, now we just have this expression, which is uh, negative epsilon ez squared minus one half e squared r dr d phi. Notice that for a point charge, we know the field or the electric field is one over four pi epsilon naught q over script r squared or separation distance squared in the r hat. But note that we want, um, for two equal charges, the EZs cancel. Uh, so we see that the E at the plane is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught, and then we have two charges to consider at the plane. And so with that, um, you know, cosine theta r hat, uh, again, look at the diagram. And so let's go ahead and chop this up. We see that that reduces to four to two and we can sub in the definition for uh, cosine. Then we see that the plane uh, squared, e squared for the plane, uh, we just square the constants and we get rid of that square root. Um, so now we see that the part that goes into the force equation, the stress tensor wise is equal to epsilon over two, e squared r dr d phi. Let's go ahead and plug that down into the integral. Since we're dealing with uh, all of space, this is zero to infinity and zero to two pi as our bounds. Well, u equal r squared and just, you know, plug it on through. d phi gives us two pi again. And then we can cancel, cancel, cancel a lot of constants. Uh, epsilons, two, and a factor of pi. After we uh, sub in the u, notice that u at infinity goes to infinity and u at zero goes to zero because infinity squared and uh and then zero squared or infinity and zero. Easy money there. All right, so apply the U sub, and now you see it's pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, yeah, just, uh, I mean, if you need to, use Symbolab or some other calculator to solve. Pretty quick there, I would say. Plug it through, evaluate the bounds, and you see we come out with uh, Q squared over four pi epsilon naught times one over two A squared. All right, that's, you know, may be expected of course now for part b note that for two equal but opposite charges the ez do not cancel and in this case e plane 
well, we have the same setup, but now we need to inca- now we need to um, consider their components, and hence the sine theta there. All right, so we see that the two for the two charges and the uh, four from the four pipes will not reduce. And you see here that sine of theta geometrically is A over script R. Okay, so with that, we can go ahead and uh, substitute in what script R cubed is. Again, geometrically, this represents the separation distance. So that's R squared plus A squared. And, and since we have three of them, uh, three times one half, since the square root is uh, three halves power. Again, we square it for the sake of what's needed in the tensor. And we plug it on through. All right, and uh, again, we just uh, now that we have the uh, tensor product with the differential areas, we can go ahead and integrate this out to find the total force. You'll notice the theme in this chapter has to do with densities and things of that nature. So we integrate through, and uh, I'll let you read the steps there. But as you see, we get a result of negative q squared over four pi epsilon naught times one over two a squared. Again, this is exactly what we expected from the Coulombic fields or Coulombic force. And uh, yeah, but now we have a new representation that can deal with all space at all time. Well, maybe not all time. Some time dependence will occur later. But pretty cool construction nonetheless.